All right, good evening. I'd like to call the Tuesday, September 7, 2021 Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. Can we all please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, under Chairman's announcements, uh, the only thing that I do have this evening is I would like to observe a moment of silence for the 13 servicemen killed in Kabul, Afghanistan on the 26th. And if uh, the folks in the room will indulge me, I'd like to read down through the names of the 13 servicemen uh, that their lives were taken that day. The first one is Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Darren T. Hoover, uh, 31 years old from Salt Lake City, Utah. Second is Marine Corps Sergeant Johanny uh, Rosario Picardo, 25 from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Marine Corps Sergeant Nicole L. Gee, 23 from Indio, California. Marine Corps Corporal Hunter Lopez, 22, of Indio, California. Marine Corps Corporal Deegan W. Page, 23, from Omaha, Nebraska. Marine Corps Corporal Humberto A. Sanchez, 22, from Logansport, Indiana. Marine Corps Lance Corporal David L. Espinoza, 20, from Rio Bravo, Texas. Uh, Marine Corps Lance Corporal Jared M. Schmitz, 20, from Charles, Missouri. Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley J. McCollum, 20, from Jackson, Wyoming. Marine Corps Lance Corporal Dylan R. Marola, 20, from Ranch Cucamonga, California. Marine Corps Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nikoi, 20, from Norco, California. Navy Corpsman Maxton W. Soviak, 22, from Berlin Heights, Ohio. And Army Staff Sergeant Ryan C. Noss, 23, from Court in Tennessee. With all that being said, um, God bless those soldiers and their families. Uh, is there anybody here for anything that's not currently on our agenda this evening? Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you for you, Mr. Chair. Um, so on Saturday, we're having a rained out concert that's being played to finish our concert. Stones Creed in Clearwater at the farm, and we are having a memorial to the 9-11, 20th anniversary ahead of that. So for two months I've been <laughs> working hard and the Chiefs have tried to help get me an honor guard. Uh, we have a bugler, we have everything else in place, the national anthem and all that, and um, lacking any minute, if I can get an honor guard, I wouldn't need flags. So I would like to ask if the farm, and myself being the one, that would be responsible. I'd wrap them up in polyethylene gear. I'd take the tops off, because I know about these generally. The tops should come off so you don't break them. Um, and transport them to the farm, and I would transport them back here. Um, not delaying any time that the town hall is open. That's what I'm asking for since two months ago. I had an honor guard, then I didn't, and then it's been back and forth, and everybody's got things going on in the morning, and they don't want to do two, and whatever, and so. It would be nice to put them on the pavilion there for the memorial that we have ahead of this. And this is, you may have seen these posters. It's not germane to the, you know, probably everything, but this is, you know, we worked hard to put this together and it's you know, everywhere generally. So, and I'm looking just for these two flags because they are very beautiful. And so, I guess here's my my question on it and uh, uh the whole 9 11 thing is kind of personal to me i i lost a couple of people that i served with uh on that day um 
I guess my first question is, is as part of the 9-11 memorial, will you be donating proceeds from the evening to the 9-11 fund? We do that. It wasn't, you know, we're trying to keep the farm alive and do things there for the public, but certainly if you're asking for some money for that, I can, I would take it out of my personal pocket. I wouldn't take it out of the farm proceeds. But again, let's see how we do. If we can get 400 people, certainly don't have a problem. If I end up with 100, then I might lose money on the band, but that's the way the whole, all these concert series go. And it's just for the people that are there to recognize, stand up, national anthem. We have a bugler that we're paying to do taps in a moment of silence. We have police officers coming. We do have some fire coming to stand with us. And uh, it's basically a reflection on the, uh, the people that have passed and also the heroes that were made during that day. So, um they're the town's flags, and uh, this doesn't, th there's two, right? So you take them, you'll take care of them, and. I'll wrap them up right here, and brand new poly. And in turn, you know, return them yeah. the following Monday or so. Um, I don't see a particular problem with that. I think it might contribute to, um, to your event. Um, I, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah, and I did not serve in any military standpoint, but I think, you know, I've been a good citizen, and and not only I think good citizens can do good things too. It doesn't have to be somebody oh, in the military. I I I don't deny that at all, um, and I don't take it lightly. It's it's just one of those things. It's very, it's close to me. Um, I have, uh, and it's my personal views. Is I have a problem with any event utilizing 9-11 and then any kind of for-profit that goes with it. Um, this is to make the people in the audience reflect on it, that we have anyway, whether we have the event or not. <clears throat> and it makes them stand up, pledge allegiance, take a moment, think about what happened, and that's my take on it. We're not going to make any more money or less money if we do it. I just think it's the right thing to do. I. I I'll let the other members share it too, Kevin, but since you looked at me, I don't, this isn't, um, my understanding uh, was different than what's being presented today. Um, what he's looking to do um, is recognize um, September 11th on an event that had already been established. The flags um, are probably difficult to come by and that these are here. Um, the NFL, the NCAA, all of all, I mean, shoot, the NFL will have um, flyovers and things, right? So to me, it's not that egregious to contribute to an event that's existing by uh, presenting the, the, the colors um, that the townspeople own um, to an event, knowing that they'll be back, um, you know, probably less than 48 hours. I think any, any thought of the of what the events that transpired on that day is, is worthwhile for people to come back to in their in their minds. So even if it's part of another event, it's I mean it's timely. Obviously, this time of year it's the 20th anniversary coming up. So I would if uh, you're making a motion, you made a motion. Or? I, I like that okay. <coughs> comment before Good. you, you okay. made a motion. I understand where Kevin's coming from. I, I as well uh, know somebody that was lost in that uh, event that happened 20 years ago. You have mixed emotions when when you have when you're that close to it. When it's associated with something that's commercial, um, it's like uh, during during our election. Uh, Hell, and somebody swiped my sign and hell sign on, on the previous year and put them on the town common. That's just a no-no zone that, because it's up there on the monument. I don't know what the feeling is, to be honest with you, uh, only because of knowing somebody that was actually in there. And I'm not... And we, and we all do. We all, um, everybody, it feels... I knew one person. We all knew he, we uh, Kevin knew three people that was in there. I, yeah, I believe two. that's correct. Yeah. Um, it's a very tough situation. Um, yeah. You know what? I remember it like a I don't want to tread on it. No, 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 no. And, and I'm not trying to. I'm just giving you an honest opinion, no, I uh, Aaron. I'm not trying to say anything negative to you. I'm yeah. just trying to explain. And 
I don't know if Hal or Tim knew of anybody in there, but I, I could tell by um, yeah. Kevin's emotions uh, where he was coming from. And anybody yeah, my that knows me, best I don't normally was, speak in this tone of voice. It, it's a difficult situation yeah. to even, right. even, we even all, be in. So. We all cry over there. <laughs> you know, so. if, but at the same time, I think it should be recognized. So it's, if you got mixed emotions on the whole process for me anyways so. if the rest of the board is amenable to yep. loaning out the town flags yep. to it I'm certainly not going to stand in the way at it I would respectfully ask that if a donation could be made to the 9-11 fund I would appreciate it yep. that's kind of where I sit with it and I agree with that I, I'm fine I'm fine either way um, I'm just I, trying I, to explain my view on on the right. whole thing and, yeah. and and, Mike, and picking up on his emotion of the whole And process. I understand the ask for that. My goal is to provide for this farm and the orchard to survive, thrive, provide a place, a safe place. Last year during COVID, we had 8,000 visitors last year. People felt so safe there. And we made something of that was a distressed property. And to rent, the side, rent these out in a way, because now we got to make a donation, which, hey, it's an honest, good thing. Um, it just feels like we're playing against the other there. I would think we'd say, the farm, go for it, you're putting it into it, you know, like that, instead of, you know, make a donation, we'll, we'll sort of rent them to you. I, I, I don't think that's what Kevin said. No, I know And I'm sorry, uh, Mr. But Chairman, but I don't think that's what he said. He said he would appreciate it if it was at all possible that you could make a donation. He, would, he is in no way telling you that you're obligated to make a okay. donation. Right. No, I, I never <clears throat> came across that way Thank at all. You, um, and the I other do point think, is, yeah, I do think that the farm itself is a tr you know tremendous draw to the people of Douglas and providing entertainment and and things, and apple picking and all of those things. And it was in in hard times till he came in and did that. So it's it's a nice feature to have in the town. Uh, yep, and nobody's disputing yeah. that at all. It was just the emotional attachment to this particular event it, yes. is all it is. Helped. The 20th anniversary yeah. of Douglas High School reunion is going to be the farm that day at the reunion. They're going to be there at the, mm -hmm. um, we're hosting them, so. And if you want to entertain somebody in the back one, say if you want to entertain somebody in the back or not. Yes, yeah, hand yeah. up. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Shirley. Shirley Mazinski, 60 Oak Street in Douglas. I hear what you're all saying, but having, having been a select person, I think you all have to ask yourself the question, would I do this for anyone else or everyone else that asks to do the same thing? Probably, yes. <laughs> I, I can't speak for everybody else up here, Shelley, but I can say if any business owner or private resident for any kind of an event especially circling around 9-11, asked if they could have temporary use of the flags used at Town Hall, uh, they'd be met with the exact same thing that Mr. Socrat was, is I would ask respectfully, make a donation to the 9-11 fund, but that's certainly not going to impede my ability to do it. At the end of the day, we serve the taxpayers. They're their flags. He's a taxpayer. If he's asking to use it, that's how I see it. And with all things being equal, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change my opinion either way, and no matter who it was. Yep. So if anybody wants to make a motion on it, I would be I'll, happy to entertain it. I'll move that we uh, approve the uh, use of the flags as uh, presented to the board tonight, and hopefully we will receive some sort of a donation as well as part of it. Hey, right, we do, we do. I don't, I don't hopefully. Want, I don't. I don't want him to feel like right. he has to. Strong yeah. arming him into yeah. making a donation. It was many. only a yeah. suggestion. That's, that's all it was. Yeah. I'm going to personally make yeah. that, not the farm. I'll personally yeah. do that. Uh, I'll second. Okay. So the motion has been made uh, to allow use of the flags to Mr. Socraft for the farm for the September 11th and been seconded. Is there any further discussion on this? Seeing as none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate the conversation. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. really important. All right, thank you. I'll take those posters back if you don't mind, unless you want to. <laughs> Just for another couple of days, sure. draw a few more people to uh, reflect. Thank you so much. I'll coordinate with Matt. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. 
So we're at the first agenda item, which is a hearing for Pine Sand and Stone, One Lackey Dam Road, amended propane license application, and possible votes. from the Leo Gas, uh, located 55 Western Street in Grafton, Mass. I'm um, here representing Dolphin Ace Concrete and Pine Sand and Gravel uh, in terms of a flammable storage, uh, flammable storage permit from the town uh, for a total of 7,000 gallons of propane uh, used to heat water and feed their facilities. Is this just a renewal of what the... Uh, I think it's a new application. Uh, it's an yes, amendment. It's a new application. Yeah. And it Chief. says something about Yes, Chief. Um, this license, is, this is a license. The license stays with the land, whether the land um, sells or not. And they're amending the license to increase 4,000 gallons of propane from 3,000 that was there previously to to 7,000. So there'll be, they already have 3,000 on site at, at another hopper. There'll be an, another 4,000 gallons, or four tanks will be added. Uh, myself and Assistant Chief Manning went out and surveyed the property, looked at where they're gonna go, talked about the necessary safety precautions, all that stuff is in place, so I, I fully support it. <coughs> that goes a long way. Yeah. Right. Um, it is a public hearing that we I have a question before. Oh, we, we never opened it. Yeah, let's yeah, open, the open that. Oh, is it open? No, we haven't opened the hearing. Uh -huh. I jumped the gun. No. I'm bad. Yeah. Not real bad, just a little bad. Just a teeny Moderately bad. Yeah. Anybody want to make a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Your question was? Good point of order, though. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I have a question for the chief. Are they uh, going to be located all in the same area, or is there three in one area and four in the other? One that has 3,000 at the hopper that's presently yeah. there. They're in the process of building another hopper, and that will be that will have four tanks, yeah. four 1,000 gallon tanks. Thank you. Any other questions from anybody? Seems pretty straightforward. And if Mr. Chair, I, I did yes, forget to mention, um, by Mass General Law, there has to be a license and a permit. So the permit would be a separate thing that I would initiate through the fire department. Oh. Excellent. I figure since the guy that would have to be there if it blows up is okay with it, I think we should be too. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> you look at the application, the word flammable is um, prevalent. Yep. And, and if the fire chief is comfortable, I am too. Anybody wish to make a motion on this? We should close the, um, yeah, we'll check to see if there's other people. Is the, there anyone here that wishes to speak against or for the license in the yeah, public hearing? Yeah. Thank you. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody wish to make a motion on the license? I move to approve the licensing request, license request uh, as presented to the board. We'll second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing as none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. It usually does help when I have to go put this fire out. He's like, yeah, I'm all good with yeah. that. All right, so we have the road use mid-state massive ultra trail race hmm. from 10-9 to 10-10 in possible votes. Is there anyone here to, it's, is it massive or ultra? Or is it both massive yeah. and ultra? It is a massive ultra. He ran 100 miles from New Hampshire to Lake Wallen. Where does it start in New Hampshire? Um, at uh, Windblown Cross Country Ski Area. All the way to Walham Lake. Seven miles north of the border. Oh, you running on this one, Tim? I'm not. No. <laughs> My Peloton's in the truck. <laughs> in the truck. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. And have you already been in touch with uh, police, fire, EMS, and highway regarding details? 
um, of New Avenue. We're only on uh, Northwest Main Street for about a quarter mile before entering the trail at Lakeshore Drive. And then we uh, cross Route 16 on the Midstate Trail, and we'll have signage um, stating runners crossing the road and going in both directions. Uh, we are also working with DCR, who has requested that we um, request an ambulance on site at Lake Wallum um, for the runners, just in case as a precautionary measure. Um, and we have obtained the certificate of insurance for the town, et cetera. And all, that. all right. So DCR, would we be able to accommodate the ambulance request and have staffing for a second ambulance to handle all the in-town stuff? Uh, I will send you that email. I'll talk to <laughs> all right. You sure you don't want to run in this then? That's too far from me. That's too far. How about you, Hal? No, thanks. No? Next year. Next year? I'll be in shape then. Can run at once and then throw your sneakers away. <laughs> Yeah. Come on down to the finish and uh, cheer on the runners as they cross the finish line. You'll love it. Who was it? Rosie Riaz? Is that the one that went Rosie into Ruiz. the Bruce went to the Boston Marathon and joined him at the last mile? Was it? Mm -hmm. I missed the. <laughs> I missed the part about crossing Route 16. I. Um, it's a Saturday Sunday. You know, 16 can get. Can get busy. I would. Um, has the fire, the, the police chief? Sorry, the, uh, the audio broke up a little oh. bit there from the person speaking. Uh, there was just a concern. Uh, you had mentioned you were crossing Route 16. That's, you know, can be a, and I'm not exactly certain I know where you are crossing. Um, yeah, this, uh, we we have a, um, an aid station in the parking lot at that area, and the runners are very infrequent. We have a volunteer station um, just to uh, highlight that there are, uh, that there's a road crossing there. Um, I think we haven't had any issues or any responded feedback for runners at that intersection. Um, and we do put reflective signage up facing both directions about a quarter mile from the crossing that says runners on the road. I mean, would it make sense just to have a have Aaron, uh, have the chief put a detail there? Well, I don't. Because 16 gets crazy. I think it makes sense to let the chief sign off on what he needs. Yeah. Yeah, that's Columbus Day weekend. Right. All right. So we'll wait for. We can do a approval with like contingency on, or just base whatever the chief's recommendations are. Ask that they accommodate. Right. Is that fair? Uh, what was the question, sir? So we'd probably look at approving this, but we would ask that the um, that you reach out with the police chief, uh, kind of run it across him, and then whatever accommodations he feels would be a appropriate, just kind of comply with those. Perfect. Not a problem. All right. Well, anything else? I don't have any. I will make a motion that we um, allow the road use requests for Saturday, October 9th and Sunday, October 10th, contingent upon um, acting on the recommendations, if any, from both the fire and police chiefs in our town. And to wish you the best of luck. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Mr. Manarek? How long are these Cedar Street signs on 16 will be in place? What I'm thinking, can they be used to move further closer to the crossing to announce drivers to slow down? It's going to be, they're going to be in place 88 days. They have to be in place 88 days. That's how long it's going to take for the bridge to go. So if we're using the Cedar Street bridge signs, yeah. we're using those for the next three months. Yeah, so we can't move those. No. The bridge will be closed. Help 
Can we go on uh, Tim's motion with the uh, yeah well from the police and fire. Check with John Furno on that. See if that's yeah. a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably one of the things that the, I would assume that the, the police, police chief would look into as well yeah. and talk to John. And he usually circles up with Highway to see if there's any recommendations from that. But good point. I always okay. include all departments after these get approved that they need to reach out to. Oh, okay. So and leases all over it with no typos. Yeah. Not yet. Not done right yet. <laughs> Sword is over. All right. <laughs> I had to. All right. So the motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion now? Seeing is none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Well, again, good luck. Thank you for thinking of our little beautiful town. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. You too. All right. So that brings us to Oktoberfest and the special one day liquor license for 10 to 10 to 21 and possible votes. And we have Mr. St. Pierre, who is the chair of the Oktoberfest committee. We've done it, this is the fourth, fourth time that we've, uh, we've done a beer festival. It's a nice, nice addition. It seems to get better every year, too. You increasing the size at all? Just pretty much same footprint, same size, same everything as last year. We'll be using Purgatory Brewing out of Northridge. It cuts down on the planning side to it. I don't have any objection to it. Does anybody? None here. Any comments? Anybody here in the audience? None. I move approval of the request for one day liquor license for Oktoberfest. Second. Uh, one note, as I know, Suzanne usually did those for two days? It's two or three days. The day before, the day of, and the, and day, the day after. after yeah. To get the beer and then offload it again um, on the, the day after so okay. they can get it, use it, and then get rid of it again. So it's three days we it need It is then? three days. Okay, and then, uh, since it hasn't been seconded, I might restate my motion that it be a three-day liquor and entertainment license. I will second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing is none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, which brings us to item number four. Whitensville Fish and Game Special One-Day Liquor and Entertainment License and Possible Votes. I am a member of the Whitensville Fish and Game. I have to recuse myself from this part of the meeting. I will turn it over to Mr. Bowman to run. Oh, that's right. All right. Um, Should be a three-day. I mean, that then. You knew all the rules. <laughs> all right. Well yeah. right. you back. Do we have any representative from the Whitensville Fish and Game here? Hi. Come on up. Who do you have? Uh, chairman of the Board of Directors. Good to see you right up there. Oh, yeah. thank you. Uh, Paul, who do you have? Board of Directors, White Tail Fishing Game. Um, we have an annual field day, which we didn't have last year, of course, with the uh, pandemic. But we're back, hopefully back in business and having another field day. It's a family fun day, uh, but we do have a small bar set up, um, a setup that uh, handles the crowd. It's not a real big crowd, usually 100 people or less. And that includes the kids. So um, we're going to, coming back for our same license we got two years ago, basically. It's a one-day license. September 18th. Yeah. Should we make it the three-day three, three day thing as we did in the last one? That no, be the, it's, it's, it is a one-day permit. They're only used. Yeah. But they, right, and, you're already, and you're already set up. Correct. But they have they, a bar license. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have a bar license now. So it's just for actually, the outside use, right? Actually, I'm a little confused as to why we need an, a one day because we have a license for the premises now because it's probably for inside because it's the one day i have now and you're going to well, have that outside there must be bar. specifics yeah. Yeah. to that yeah. so we're getting the, the one day license for the yeah. uh pavilion uh, which but they set up a break down in one day well, three days at the end well but yeah it's we because you one day. you also can't use stock from inside okay a separate yep. purchase yep. Of, of for that, and then we dispose of it after. So it would be three days with that one as well? Crazy rules. It is, but it's still a, the one day permit, okay. yes. But the length would be a total of three days. We pour on only one day. Correct. Yeah. 
And we've done this before. I think yeah. I remember mm -hmm. really we considering this and, you know, after the event, there was really nothing to talk about, so. Um, no, I've been to it a few years ago. It's just a family yeah. fun day. Yeah. Nobody's getting foolish. Yeah. It's just a fun day. Well yeah. controlled. Yeah. Yeah. I don't drink myself, so I'm the I'm policeman. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I would entertain a motion. Uh, so moved. Second. All right. Um, having a the motion and it being seconded, I'll uh, ask any other discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just like Thank that. You. Thank you. Ladies Thank and gentlemen. Have a great night. Good luck to you and enjoy the night. <laughs> Sir, if you could send the chairman in. He's the one with the cigarette. <laughs> He's released from purgatory now. <laughs> what? I was just trying to help. So. <laughs> You sure you guys want to be back? Well, <laughs> yeah. We, it was a split vote, and we yeah. were like deadlocked, so we had to take it. Let you back. All right. So. <laughs> I believe that with three people. <laughs> <laughs> One's one with an abstention. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. So we're on to. Uh, the Planning Board and Les, and Les Stevens review warrant items for STM and possible votes. Hello, Les. Um, so the Planning Board. So the Planning Board uh, back in probably last September um, into probably December took up about, I think we looked at six different things that came across our board. Um, one of them was the accessory apartments, which I think we're going to try for the spring to kind of clean up that. Um, that's just been more of a nuisance to going through the accessory power and renewal process. Um, so what we ended up doing was, was we cut the articles down, um, discussion went back and forth with the board as well at the time, town engineer Bill Cundiff was there. We had these uh, articles ready for the spring and then um, and we kind of lost uh, line of sight with the staffing turnover and things like that. Um, so the articles are pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of them are, are applicants that came before us with um, second articles really related to, I think it's Caswell Court. Um, and we realized that you no, know, we could have 200 feet of frontage in a VR zone to be back to for a um, reduced lot frontage being that far back. Um, because then the setback is only 50 feet, so we're trying to look at kind of updating the bylaws and, and make some, some corrections there. Um, and then the other article is around the highway bounds. Uh, the highway bounds was has been kind of been a pet project of the planning board for a number of uh, meetings and town meetings. We, um, we usually ask for 12,000, but considering we missed the, the spring and now we're into the fall, uh, the board members asked to increase that to 25. What we're tr the highway bounds are for a number of our subdivisions that went bankrupt. It's to uh, put the land markers in there so they can properly survey people's property, knowing their you know uh, front yard areas and you know what their lot lines are, be able to put place a shed and things like that. Um, this came about. Um, I think Shady Nolds Estate it was a um, property owner that came before us and said, you know, guys, my, you know, half my subdivision doesn't have bounds. Um, we looked through it with, at the time, with the, with the staff that we had on hand, um, ended up finding, I believe there was like six or seven subdivisions with missing bounds that were incomplete. So, um, and then uh, the other article, the last one there was uh, brought before us um, regarding the use table change. Um, Again, our use table and some of the things we've added, uh, we haven't gone through in probably sitting down as a committee or joint committee to review things to figure out what's, what needs to be changed or what's outdated. Um, and that one came forward with us, with again, a, a citizen stepping forward asking for this change. The board felt that that was proper change to, to induce uh, a business into that area, so. That's uh, the cut and dry of, of, of these articles. Um, planning board voted unanimously to move these forward. 
this is a cut down list of six articles. So the one that we want to really, and just so you guys for uh, a little forward thinking is, is the accessory apartments. I think we'll pick that back up right after the annual, the fall town meeting because of uh, the renewal process. And we, we've got a little bit of a sp split board back and forth, but I think it's just about putting the articles before the people of the town's people and figuring out uh, what they want and what they, what they want their town to look like. Um, and, and the aggravation, I think, of some of the overhead that we deal with around the accessory apartments. So. Les, are you here on behalf of the board? Yep. Yeah, I got to do the, the short straw on that one, so. Can I ask a question on one of them? The yep. 4.3 lot frontage uh, exemption. exemption? Yep. So the area of said lot, is it two times the required area for RA zone possibles? Correct. So was it at 1.3 times and we're looking to change it to two? So the, it's funny, the, the, um, the RA is two times but the VR was three times. So the VR, which is what we're changing, the VR, it was three times the, of a lot. So, so if you look at, it's, it's roughly two acres on an RA, mm -hmm. and then if you have the limited frontage, it would be then four acres, okay? In the VR zone, it should, you know, what, what we reviewed and discussed was, why is it so much different if, if you've got you're looking for some relief on the frontage. You on should the be multiplication, but the the area of the village residential is twenty thousand, correct? So it would be sixty thousand. Correct, and and so we yeah, so just so I just want yeah. to show these guys understand. So same percentages. Correct. So it was it was initially two x, three uh, x, which was sixty thousand, and then um, with our back of an acre and a half to a, an acre, an, 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 an acre, half acre to an acre and a half, and village residential go from two acres to four acres in RA, right? No. 20,000 square feet to 40,000. Well, that's what it is currently. Correct. And we would go to 40,000, which is still meets all the Title V requirements. Yep. Yep. So, and then the V, uh, yeah, the I'm RA. to help them understand what yep. it currently is. That's yeah, what that's, that's what it is. It, it's, but we, we looked at looking at the town maps and looking at where these possible uh, lot frontage exemptions would be used for a VR zone. And there's a, just a handful of them, if possible. Um, and, and the 200 feet of setback, we don't even require that on our RA zone because it's a 50 foot setback really for the house and then they need a little longer because of the driveway to, um, to be placed in the house and stuff like that. So those were the thoughts. We spent a number of times with the town engineer at the time going through these um, probably over three or four months <coughs> and um, tightened them up. They were all kind of ready in, in the January, December time frame of, of uh, this year before um, we had a staff change. So things were actually progressing to try to bank it for the spring and uh, things got off the rails and um, you know, we're, we're putting these forward um, to host a public hearing and a discussion on them and get them on the town warrant so the folks can vote up or down if they want these changes. Yes sir, just a couple thoughts. Uh, one is I haven't had a, I just received this thing mm -hmm. when it came in Thursday. Um, haven't had enough time to make an informed decision uh, or comment on this, haven't had a chance to look into it. But aside from that, we're uh, hopefully going to be successful with our next candidate that we have um, oh. in the planning role yep. as a town planner, looking at the resume of that individual as a strong background in zoning uh, review and rewriting, if, if need be. Mm -hmm. I would think that, unless there's a huge time crunch, um, I would think that we should at least go through that process and see if we have somebody else that's going to be in that capacity. My concern is, it seems like we, we constantly keep jumping to make a zoning change. Um, we did it for the car wash, which I don't see a car wash there as of yet. I'm sure it could show up at some point. Um, talking about uh, there's a restaurant mm -hmm. uh, rezoning that's in here. There's, uh, he's talking about uh, rezoning for the accessory apartments, and I think that- That's not in here. I think, uh, I understand that. Let no. speak. Um, I believe that's only for a timing thing. If I had caught one of your meetings, instead of three years, it was five years, something like that, you were changing that, the time limit on that. Um, 
I would just, I would personally like a little more time to make sure that I could look at it and see, see what it is that I may be concerned with that I could actually have some input into it and make a comment. Um, I don't think I could make one in just looking through the stuff briefly to give a, a good solid comment. Do we have a huge time crunch? Would this be able to make it to our next agenda and still be able to hit the warrant? Would by our next meeting give you a sufficient oh, no. time? Yeah, Any, anything more than a day or two would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we have to open a public hearing. Um, I think at our next meeting or, or fairly soon to be able to, there's a whole timing process and having enough runway to, to be able to do all these. Um, and I get my, In all fairness, you just made a statement that you had this ready in December, January, November, or whatever, February, whatever it is. Yep. So if you wait till the end of summer, it's no, no, it, not our fault. No, I understand. <laughs> it wasn't, again. Lack of del uh, delay doesn't create an emergency. I agree. And, and it was just, just the staffing yeah. that we were dealing through and, and going through those process. So um, I, I haven't seen, I've been on zoning mm -hmm. for the last almost nine years. And I don't think we've seen anybody that's come forward that's addressed any of these issues that they get denied somewhere. So I yeah, yeah, we're not we're not well, looking we're not looking just making that point. Yeah, we're not, I don't like to rush into things, mm -hmm. especially this is a long-lasting uh, change that's going to stick with the town for quite some time until somebody else uh, attempts to change it, whether or not it goes through. So I would rather look at it properly and make good sound judgment that's going to affect the town long term. We have time for both boards to be able to go through their runtime in order to make town meeting, right? If we just push mm -hmm. by one meeting? I think you would. You'd have to have your advertising requirements for a public hearing. Mm -hmm. 14 yeah. days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, just, I don't so know if we meet twice. You'd have to have their hearing in time. Yeah, I don't know if we meet twice. STM. You know, why is it urgent to be done in the fall? Is there any urgency to that? I'm just, I'm just asking. I, I, I know. The, well, the, the thing was was that we were trying to put these in for the spring from, again, some yeah. situations that we dealt with. Um, and the trying to get the bids out there for the bounds to be able to do the subdivision so those can be you, done. You can separate this out. If, if it's the bounds, the bounds are on almost every meeting, that, uh, every town meeting that we have, yeah. or the fall town meeting, to... Uh, put in to put a bounds it didn't get put in last time for whatever reason maybe it was overlooked but you could separate the bounds out it doesn't this isn't an all or nothing thing correct no no it was it, so you could separate out the bounds my whole point is poor planning gives you poor results and if we do this properly you can mm -hmm. ultimately end up with but something that's that an be important good. question what is the board's intent here is it a package of amendments or do you want each of these initiatives to be a separate uh, they, they usually uh you know i mean in the past with the moderator usually packages them together for an all all together vote um the planning board again did, did cut well, them down he, he may he may take multiple war, uh, uh, just, items um, on that and put them together but he yeah. the moderator doesn't put them together in the warrant uh, the moderator taking them on a vote does it all uh, packages them together um what the planning board just did was they they looked at all these Again, um, vetted them through the staffing that was here and, and going through to make the changes. Um, you know, we, we've got addressed some things that we were looking to do in the spring. Um, some some of the things that are just uh, toothache issues that we deal with and stuff like that, making it easier on the on the public. So that's what uh, the, these articles are really what we're driving towards is just making things easier on the public. Some things that we've dealt come come before us where, you know, if you're familiar with the Caswell Court. Um, you know, that applicant had a situation where they're in a VR zone and had to be 200 feet back, even though, you know, they had to then seek a variance and pay the $800 and stuff like that in a VR zone, just didn't make sense to us. Is I that the a, one that just uh, recently, uh, oh, sorry. I had a question at 4.3.7, uh, going from 200 to 50. Yeah, that's the, you know, that's because of the front setback, so that, is the same situation with, with Caswell uh, Court that came before us because the 200 feet back for that particular VR zone area, they only needed to go back 50 feet and then they opened up the space. They go back 200 feet, they're almost in their back property line. Yeah. That, wasn't that within the last like four months, something like that? 
no. Very recent. It was very recent, right? No, it was it was bef way before that. That's what triggered that. That that would happened in October. There, there was one that you just recently did that you guys gave them a uh, uh, rare lot exception. They had come to ZBA. They wanted to subdivide the lot. I don't remember the address. Remember the address of that one, Dan? Sorry. Remember that? I think it was 19, 19 Caswell or something like that, or 24 Caswell or whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure. sure the number. Yeah, there was, I don't think that's the but same you one. Guys gave them, because we had suggested that they, uh, they were trying to keep all the land behind their house, and, mm. and they just couldn't sub, and subdivide it. You guys, they actually went from ZBA, they got denied at ZBA, went to planning board, and you guys gave them a real lot exception, mm. and they put the house where we had asked them if they would move it to them. So... I had a question too. The explanation that doesn't seem to make the planning board is a number of applicants use this bylaw section recently. Mm -hmm. Planning board would like, oh, but you haven't made the change. I don't understand the sequel. Yeah, it was. It was just when we have applicants coming before us regarding this section, the section of yeah. lo the, the lot exemption. So the, the, the so you, what it is is it's a reduced lot frontage exemption. Um, that's what triggered us. To look at the language you know in our review we, we were like okay what other parcels would have the same situation what other situations with this and then it was trying to figure out why is you know is if you're a vr zone you're twenty thousand. why would you have to do three times the area where if you're in the ra you only have to do two times so that was a discussion point that we had um and then the other discussion point was the 200 feet back on a on a vr area it, it was almost impossible looking around at any other areas that would trigger that and you know the the whole thing was was not having the applicant needed to go you know any additional steps or any additional back to the planning board back and forth and stuff like that it was really just trying to clean up to say what was written there for vr really didn't allow anybody to to do that without so many different hurdles to cross Whoops. so a couple of things is to answer your question that I think you'd ask is, I think each one of these is going to be an individualized warrant article. Well, it would have to be. Yeah. Because they're yeah. all in different policy yeah. Yeah, different areas. Yeah. Areas. So it would, to be fair to the, the voters at town meeting, they need to know what they're voting. They may want one and not the other, mm -hmm. and packaging would not be yeah. and I think prudent with the two thirds required. Yeah. And correct me if I'm misunderstanding your, your position on him, uh, Selectman Fitzpatrick, is that you're comfortable with the bounds article. But the rest of them, you'd like more time to review. Uh, well, to make it clear, I'm not comfortable with that fact that we're paying for these bounds. But um, my understanding is, is we're trying to correct past problems where developers went bankrupt. And mm -hmm. you can correct me if I'm wrong or whatever. Um, and we're just trying to get it, get the bounds in place. Hopefully, moving forward, the planning board is making some arrangements or some provisions. To ensure the fact that the yeah. taxpayers are no longer subsidizing the uh, builders. Well, it, it's, it's establishing it's a, surety. Surety. You yeah. should make sure that the bounds are part of that surety. Right. Mm -hmm. And when the road layout is presented to you mm -hmm. to accept, set the bounds. Or there. to be referred to town meeting first and then for you to accept. Right. You shouldn't accept anything until the work is complete right. that you have surety for. Yeah. Right. So it, I think we did fix that. So this yeah. problem is probably 15 it is 20 historic. years old. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and and to the chair, you know, that's the thing is is um, it, it's it's helping the citizens of Douglas that live in these neighborhoods being able to do proper surveying their property and things like that. That's the only reason why you know this came before from from a a person who lives in the neighborhood and said he was having problems putting up a fence and stuff like that. So um, that's how they came before us. You know, I mean, it's it's citizens coming forward with certain issues and then boards taking action upon them to, and, and reviewing them. It, these weren't taken any any lightly. Um, we still have debates on a few articles to do. Well, I mean, they're going to be separate articles anyway, so we still have plenty of time to put the bounds on. on that was, uh, sure. we don't have to jump more, we can vote for it. That was my underlying thing is like, yep. you wanted more time to review the rest of them yeah. and, you know, the one regarding the bounds is about the one that we feel Okay, yeah, about and right if, now. And Matt uh, feels that the uh, timing's fine, that we can just put it on the next meeting and we can just vote on the bond. Like you can. Uh, in the course of conversation, though, I'm troubled because I would like a professional planner to, to really parse this out. Uh, I can explain the, the reason why 
you would triple in VR and only double in RA, and it has to do with density and mm -hmm. packing of traffic on roads. And VR, by definition, is in the village, and you may already have small roads at capacity, which is why you would have restricted the development of backland in the VR, not the RA, where you may have almost no density at all. I want somebody with the proper training to go through these proposals and, and show the upside and downside. I would like to have somebody in place, but let's say we hired somebody tomorrow and they gave their employer two weeks' notice. Mm -hmm. They'd have a day to look over this, right. familiarize themselves mm -hmm. with the town of Douglas, and give you some advice. Yeah. So, um, does it make? I'm sense not feeling a warm and fuzzy about. I'm just totally concerned. There are some things. The reason why I asked about mm -hmm. is it separate articles? Is there mm -hmm. might be some that are timely to move forward, mm -hmm. like bounds, mm -hmm. and others that should be held mm -hmm. for. I mean, May isn't that far no. away. No, no, it just. Yeah, I mean, when we had staff, you know, I mean, they went through and reviewed and stuff like that. So if, if we want to review it with new staff, again, there's Maybe nothing. Maybe you can pick out a few things you think are priority that we need to push well, after. Well, I've been trying to get the accessory department thing going through because um, that, that thing's been just a, a, I don't know, Matt, what, a, a burdensome um, from the um, – notification and the renewal process and the missing of renewals and stuff like that so is this accessory or accessory problem? yeah you know what I mean that that's one and um there was a, there was another one we had to deal with and I don't think we got to as well um so so things like that so that's all so the restaurant one it appears that the EDC the yep. ZBA should have a role and the planning board weighed it, in and said no it should be the planning board no, it's 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 usually the planning board sponsors the articles. Okay. Um, That's in in I'd say ninety percent of, of articles related to uh, the town's bylaws for changes is usually sponsored by the planning board so, and so carried forward. The one the one benefit of doing it that way, Tim, is it gives the applicant a a mechanism in which to appeal it locally yeah. versus going to court. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you know, I was. Thinking that it should be the other way originally until it was explained to me that way. Yep. And that makes sense. Correct. So. Yeah, you don't want to take away your local uh, appeal process. Yeah. If if something's sponsored or something's introduced that way, then you you lose your local appeal process. Yeah. Why did you take out RA? Can we have this discussion about that? What do you mean, RA? It's kind of going down a rabbit hole. I can no, I'm just, uh, yeah, that's why I stopped. I realized that maybe I'm going somewhere I'm not supposed to. Okay. So. I think it would probably be. It really doesn't matter. I can go to a planning board meeting and ask that question. Okay. Either that or we sure. can propose yep. a joint meeting with planning and, and get your questions addressed by the whole board. It's putting Mr. Stevens kind of on the spot <laughs> as a single representative. I don't know if I want to jump into a, necessarily get into a, a, a all night meeting. Okay. <laughs> right, so all right, yeah. I, I've witnessed some of their meetings and, and giving them ex extra help could make it go longer. So, uh, <laughs> be early in a planning board meeting. Yeah. Anyway, Only an hour in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, so that, that's my thought, anyways, is just um, to give a, have an opportunity to review it and potentially. Uh, all right. So, does anybody disagree with tabling five until the next meeting? No. Do uh -huh. you want to. Um, Oh, Bob, do we want to put the bounds uh, into vote on the bounds? Do we do it separately, or can we split that up from what this is? Bob, you had a. Well, that's a financial thing, right? So that that we can put a placeholder. Placeholder for it. We should be in the habit of doing that, so yeah. that people who attend fall town meeting expect to see it, and that's when that business would be taken care of. Yeah. And it's a good thing to have, and not end up with a spring warrant with you know 57 Correct. articles on it. Right. So. Right. That should be timely, and that should be done, frankly, yep. if we can do it. Yeah. Mr. Manarek. Uh, Bob Manarek, Economic Development. Top five, there's two halves to that. There's the uh, restaurant, which is uh, commercial CP. That has already had a public hearing. Your board looked at it about a month ago, went to the planning board for a public hearing. Now it's on its way back, approved. And that was before you to get onto the okay. top warrant. All right, and that's the restaurant one? Yeah, it's the restaurant. Uh, that be the last one. Fourth article there. Yeah. Yeah. Previous one. Put that one on. They can be handled the same way with a placeholder and we'll just deal with the next meeting, or you want to vote on that? Well, do you have any issues with doing the bounds in the restaurant and then no. placeholder the other? I have no okay. problem with that. Does that 
Anybody have any that, thoughts on that? I think it makes sense. Just a, and I heard the the, the local appeals. Um, that makes sense to me, Bob. Mm -hmm. But can you speak to why EDC thought ZBA right away? The ZBA is in the book. It's already in the book. The planning board changed ZBA twice to planning board, and then the, re the request was for village residential from an N to a. We recommended the zoning board. The planning board struck out the three CBs special permit by uh, zoning board to special permit by planning. Board. Okay, so it, 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 their, their that's reason then. was to so. keep the appeal process in town. Correct. The, the other thing with that is they would be done. At the same time. One stop shop is, is the goal there. I mean, and still having local control. <laughs> so that was the, that was the whole goal. And, and we, I think we went around and around on, because um, I think there was some other, you know, besides the restaurant, there was other article, other line items that, you know, would be reviewed in the future. I think once we get a planner, and I mean, I, I know we've been struggling for some staff help and stuff like that, and we're hopefully we got a candidate this week that's worthwhile. Then go from there you know um, that's what's needed at the end of the day we've I think our bylaws are 20 years <laughs> 25 ready for review that's later. what the plan age doesn't make it bad right huh? no <laughs> age doesn't make it bad right it's only in wine <laughs> I don't know what he was implying yeah I don't know what he was going with that <laughs> no but it's, it's just an it's an outdated playbook looking at it that way to keep the ball Maybe. moving we're looking at two out of the four yeah. Being proposed today. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're okay with up. the with the bounds in the restaurant one, yep. and then we're gonna place hold of the other two. We need a full okay. vote on those two, or just as enough to that came before us. The Why don't you vote so that two separate votes? Warrant. Yeah. So far, no. <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> All right. Well, let me just find the uh, first one. You get a waiver in the audience. Yep. To clarify, one has had a public hearing already. Yep. The restaurant. The bounds needs to go back to the planning board for a public hearing. I don't think it does. No, it's not a zoning change. It's no. a money thing. It's, it's money. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Just goes before you guys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you guys would advertise and go for it. Does that answer your question, Mr. Yeah. Mayor? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody got a gag? <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> I would you make a acknowledge Bob, <laughs> or he's going to end up at your house out in the shrubs, and you're going to hear him that way. Okay. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I, would I would make a motion to inform Matt of this board's desire to see the highway bounds appropriation discussion, and the zoning use regs, zoning bylaw. No correction. The restaurant. Um, I'm going to call it the zoning bylaw, zoning use regs. Um, Proposal to be on the next town meeting warrant. Placing on the warrant. Yep. Okay. All right. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. No. Is there any further discussion or clarification? Seeing is none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Appreciate your time. You want me uh, back on the 19th or whenever the next meeting? When you guys meet in two weeks? Yeah, in two weeks. 23rd. Yeah, you'll post it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> We'll play by air. Perfect. We'll have our people call your people. <laughs> good. Thanks, guys. Good night. All right. The next agenda item is the use of ARPA funds as mass works match not to exceed $950,000 in possible votes. I'm looking right at Mr. Manara because I'm sure he's got a lot to say on this one. Make it short. Yeah. All right. The uh, <laughs> you're looking to me to be concise. That might be a mistake, but <clears throat> an abundance of words would be a mistake here. The town of Douglas has an active Mass Works application, and that process of weighing the various proposals is underway at the state level. The town received a phone call from the assistant secretary and his immediate direct report. And I'm not at liberty to go into every last detail, but I'll summarize as follows. There is no promise that the town of Douglas will get a grant. There was very clear indication that our existing grant application is too 
large and would not be approved in its format as presented because we, we blew through all the markers, right? So we're asking for a $12 million project with $8 million worth of grant funds. And the largest grant I think they've ever given is just a little bit more than $4 million. So we went back and following the advice and some of the guidance of the state officials that were on the phone call and with the help from Bob and from our uh, the Stantec engineer, Gina Britton, who's been walking point on this. We went back into the project description and matched ARPA eligibility requirements against the funding need for the project in order to, to follow the guidance of the state officials was that the town needed to put more resources into the application. So that's where we ended up with the correspondence that was in your packet, which was the town's recasting of its application to it to remove natural gas service explicitly from the grant discussion because ARPA funds cannot be used for natural gas. They can only be used for water and sewer and that the town's match would include ARPA funds and we would also be raising match funds from the private developers that are looking to develop. So we ended up with a very nearly almost a 50-50 split with the state for an $8 million project. So that's the repositioning of our grant application was strategic. <clears throat> our intent has always been, I say our because I think the board received this recommendation positively was to form a citizen committee to discuss how to spend the $2.7 million worth of ARPA funds the town will receive over the next two years from the federal government. The federal government, the legislation that created that funding mechanism uh, restricted the use of ARPA funds to some very specific cones of eligibility. So it's not a carte blanche, here's 2.7 million, go, go, yes. go ye therefore and grow the economy. That's not what it was. Water, sewer, water that is a project that's eligible under the Safe Drinking Water Act. Sewer must be a project that would be eligible for funding under the Clean Water Act. Expansion of broadband services, revenue replacement, and there's a whole documentation effort that you have to go through for revenue replacement. And something, something that I'm not gonna remember, but that we're not eligible for. It's an, uh, our community isn't set up the way the urban areas are. So we still should have that citizen committee, but the mandate would be very narrow. The, you have the most flexibility around revenue replacement. So <clears throat> in some parts of the country, especially those places that were heavy tourist destinations that were devastated by the pandemic because nobody came and their businesses failed and they didn't raise any revenue. Um, you go through a documentation process. Where do you think you would have been? What is the rational basis for that projection? And then you're allowed to take ARPA funds, put them back into your budget, and then spend them as general fund. We don't have very much of that. We might spend more time chasing pennies to document minimal revenue loss. Because at the end of the day, the one thing about being a purely residential economy almost entirely is that we didn't suffer that revenue loss that the major tourist and other commercial centers suffered. So there'll be some, and we'll go through the preliminary steps to see if there's a there there. But for the most part, we have to focus on water and sewer eligible product projects. So that's a conversation we should engage with the public and with the Water Commission, the elected Water Commission, to see what their priorities are. We have a fair amount of infrastructure in town in the water and wastewater departments that is due for an upgrade and should be visited carefully uh, in concert with the fire department because they are dependent upon public water in some parts of town for fire suppression resource. And it's not necessarily uh, perfect at every last hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> so there may be, there's a there there in terms of what that conversation should be directed towards. The $950,000, which is a high number, so I'm building in a cushion for contingency. 
reflects that part of the project that's in our MassWorks application that is ARPA eligible. So of the almost $12 million, Stantec identified over $5 million that would be ARPA eligible. It's all the engineering that goes into the water project. This water project was the number one project in the ratings process from the Capital Committee two years ago. And that's to upgrade the water service down Gilboa Street because at one time when the Shell Station was put in, somebody planned ahead and put in a big pipe. Problem is they connected that big pipe to a small pipe and that's not really good practice. That entire pipe needs to be upgraded to the same size as that larger end. So we're not creating basically a water hammer at the end of town. And then running that service into the other towns that are part of the Blackstone Valley Logistics Project on the other side of 146. Our grant application is faring well because we have a regional component. We have part of our project that helps both Sutton and Uxbridge as well as Douglas get a project done. So that's what the focus of this would be. Bear in mind if our grant application is unsuccessful, you haven't spent that whole 950. What, so now I'm going to look at, we've spent 200, 225, 225 for engineering. engineering. So that engineering though is, going, is resting at 90%, right? The 225 will bring it to 100. 100% design. So those will be shovel ready plans for any grant application we would file or that we would work with with a private sector uh, partner if we don't get the grant. That's pretty much in a nutshell. It's a long nutshell, but. It's a very big nutshell. I don't, I don't, it's a really big grant. It's a really big opportunity. So do you need us to, you want us to vote on this? Yeah, I, I'm not comfortable obligating the town. <laughs> it's kind of six digits approaching seven digits. I mean, that's for you to do. It's grant funds, so technically they're spent without further appropriation, but the select board should at least vote on it. Yeah. yeah. I'll move that we uh, use not to exceed $950,000 of APRA funds as a mass works match. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Just in, <clears throat> for my own edification, um, the ARPA funds, does this board control those monies? Um, does any portion of it have to go to town meeting? You should get a formal written opinion from council, but the way grant funds are always handled when they come from the feds under federal el eligibility guidelines, they are spent by the departments typically without further appropriation from town meeting. Okay. Because it's not being raised and appropriated from the people, it's coming in from an outside source. No, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now my view then, though, as the chief executive, the select board makes the decision. Should be the determination. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other discussion on this? <clears throat> Seeing is none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We have a potential new member for the EDC, Steve Grogan. Not the former but, quarterback but from the, the New England back. Patriots. He should throw a football. He's never heard that before. Yeah, right. Never. <laughs> Not a while. I will say this. I, I do own two auto autographs, and one of them is oh. Steve Grogan. So. Oh, you get, get a third one. Yeah, he's, he's, third. he's golden. Yeah. <laughs> How are you with Good? Good. So I think we've been, he applied a while ago. I think we've just been trying to wait to get him onto the agenda. Okay. Cool. And I'm always happy to see any new member to uh, any volunteer. Give us a little bit about your background and. Well, I've lived in town for 22 years. Um, not a lot of growth. We haven't seen a lot of stuff happen. Um, Nick and I get together and we throw ideas at each other a lot. Um, you know, if I could make a little difference in town, I think that'd be great. Um, I'm a nurse, I work at 
UMass Medical Center. I work in the OR. I've been doing that for about 18 years now. Um, yeah, I have a couple degrees. Great. Work well with people. And you can throw a football 40 yards with a tight spiral. <laughs> or, no. <laughs> I would make a motion to welcome uh, Mr. Grogan to the EDC committee. Second. All right, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No. Seeing as none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you for volunteering. Yeah, welcome. So, all right. Tell your friends we got more openings than other areas. <laughs> right. Yeah. We can stay or go, it's up to him. Yeah. We're not used to an audience, but we're always happy to have one. You guys are welcome to stay. I'll try. Because you don't have enough power? Or I have like, no bars. You? Uh, I'll, I'll do it then. We're going to try to get town council on the phone because he has to be part of this. All right. It's like we're on a game show. Calling your hey, lifeline. Rich, you ready? Yeah, right, amen. Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. What would you do? <laughs> this is science, wonderful technology. This is so exciting. It's never a dull moment at our meetings. Just review the edits, like the new one. Right. Yeah, I'm fine with that. All right. Try and gain some time back. Yeah. I Have a good night. Thanks. Good night. Thank guys. you again. All right. This is crazy, but can can you hear us? We're gonna try to hear you. I hear you. Ah, it's pretty good, actually. The esteemed town council. How are you, Mr. Bowen? I'm doing fine. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. All right. So we are going to review and update the code of conduct for boards, commissions, and committees, and possible votes. And we yeah. understand that you had asked to be part of this conversation. Yeah. So my thought was is um, Matt had sent out to us in our packets um, a list of proposed edits uh, to our existing code of conduct for boards commissions and committees mm -hmm. uh, I figured I would just review what the edits are and kind of go line by line and add any uh, color legal commentary as needed was that your plan Mr. Bowen yeah I'm ready <laughs> all right so uh, all members of boards, commissions, and committees shall. Uh, a lot of the other things were crossed out. First item is be well informed concerning the duties, responsibilities of their committee. Discuss or act upon those matters their committee is authorized to consider as defined in federal and state laws, uh, town bylaws, and town policies. Hard to argue with that. Yeah, it's apple pie brotherhood. All right. Uh, number two, make decisions only after all the facts and analysis have been performed and presented and discussed. Uh, acknowledge and respect all lawful majority decisions uh, of the committee once they are made. Once made. Yeah. Yep. That sounds good. Uh, item three uh, is completely struck sure. off of the previous. So the, three. so the new three, formerly four, yeah. conduct themselves in a professional and dignified manner, refraining from any activity that would reflect negatively on the town and its processes, 
Members shall acknowledge in writing at the time of appointment that the use of profane, profane language, racial, ethnic, or religious slurs, or the display of offensive materials or symbols while in a meeting of the committee shall be grounds for corrective action up to and including removal from office by the appointing authority. Well, uh, I think as an aspiration, that's a good thing. Um, I can imagine a case where um, someone makes a claim that displaying that kind of symbol or using that kind of language is protected speech. Um, but I, I guess what I'd suggest is go with the language. Uh, but if you get to a point where you actually want to take some sort of uh, enforcement action, that at that point, rather than trying to, um, you know, micromanage the, the clause now, look at the particular set of facts at the time and make a decision then as to what's appropriate. I just don't think you can um, wordsmith it in every way uh, that will make it survivable. But at the same time, it's kind of hard to say that you shouldn't have some sort of policy that discourages you know, commonly acknowledged offensive behavior. All right. So we're just going to kind of, your advice is to run with three with kind of an asterisk? Yes. And then if something comes up, uh, we make a decision at the time on the facts as to whether three should be invoked. Okay. Uh, we'll go to item number four. Not use their committee... Uh, position for financial or political gain. Committee members shall not use their position to influence other committees or town staff to make decisions to which they are not otherwise entitled, either through any form of intimidation or promised benefit. If I might, I, I have a, a problem with a political gain. It's somebody putting down that they serve on a board on their campaign literature should be permissible, but it sounds like that could be covered by that. So if you're on the planning board and you're running for board of selectmen, you put maybe on your selectmen literature that you're on the planning board or have been on the planning board. I don't see any problem with that, but it might be brought in to that political gain. Hmm. So Very well made. It is. One could do so. And I think we don't want to discourage people from putting that in their resume if they're running for office. And that's not the intent. The intent is to prevent people from using the opportunity to appear on video to have a campaign button while they're, I'm not looking at you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's, that's typically where we try to draw the line, right? So you are at a meeting, you're conducting public business. <coughs> it may be, the mission may be very specific. It may be zoning and it's land use and you're running for a policy position on the select board. But the display of campaign material while you're in a public meeting is like it's a running and, and now listen, how many people watch the meetings? All right, we're not going to go there. That's not the, it's, it's what you're trying to do. But the language is broader. The than language is broader than that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I share Hal's reservation about political gain. Uh, you know, I know we all tend to use the word politics as uh, a dirty word, but you know the the essential form of government is a political system. So I, I think it's too broad. I'll just strike political gain, oh. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. The the all these uh, code of conduct that's up to the uh, discretion of the. Uh, the appointing authority to whether or not they want any disciplinary or removal action. Is that correct? So that's when the logic would come in as far as the political connection to it. But you shouldn't chill the free speech of somebody wanting to list something on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think it's political. I would say take it out, political gain. What's political gain? Getting elected to an office or getting right. appointed? 
I don't see anything other than that. Uh, you know, and if you do a good job in your office, yeah, it th- usually is political gain. You become more popular. You can get elected to another position. It's it's a t- it's. I understand what it's trying to get at, but I I just don't think it can be got at in this way. So we can leave financial and just strike political. Yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah, that's right out of the conflict of interest law. Anybody have any issues with that? No, I think that's good. Okay. So we're on to number five, formally number six. Comply with ethics, open meetings, and access to public records laws established by the state. Committee members shall upon appointment and annually thereafter complete online code of conflict, online uh, conflict of interest training provided by the Ethics Commission and submit proof of completion to the town clerk. Members shall be subject to corrective action up to and including removal from office for failure to comply with the ethics laws or the training requirement. I don't think there's anything wrong with that one. No. I, just, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't specify online if I had to write this again. Any training opportunity. So that we could get somebody from the Ethics Commission to come to Douglas and train many board members in one meeting for those who especially don't want to do it Should online. It comply with the ethics law? Well, the training, do you want the, to put the, any? The, the training is what gets you the awareness of what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and I think you've been through it recently yes, to be on this yep. board. So it was, what, 45 minutes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not recently. recently. I have to do ethics training. Separation of loyalty. Um, just a point, uh, Mr. Chairman. In number three and in number five, you have the corrective action in there. Number four, you don't. It is not necessarily they have that repetitive throughout the whole thing. Is it just assume that it would be a corrective action if you didn't comply with any of these steps? Yeah. Or these uh, code of conduct items? I think so. It's an implied that corrective action will be taken. You could put it at the end as a blanket that comes. <laughs> well, because I see it, it just it skips every other one. So it just is it opening up an argument? Yeah, have a separate enforcement section. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, the next item is not make statements or promises of how he or she will vote on matters that will come before their committee uh, before all sides of the issue have been heard during a public meeting of that board or committee. Makes sense. No I think you've got a free speech issue on that one too. Yeah. The uh, now, granted, it's the best practice to sit and wait to hear the evidence before you pass judgment. It's that really that's the only good practice. Uh, but there are circumstances where, the, uh, the, say, a developer is coming in for something that's controversial in the community. Um, it, it's going to be pretty hard to to have officials biting their tongue when the public is looking for some sense of direction. So it's it's a complicated one. I think it's probably best left out because it will create problems um, and ultimately. If an official prejudges something in an appropriate, in an inappropriate manner, um, that may well result in the reversal of the decision by the court. All right. I think that's your remedy. Let's take that one out. So the recommendation is to strike that item. Yes. So I thought too. All right. Uh, the next is to treat all members uh, of the committee and town staff and the public respectfully despite of differences of opinion. Apple pie and motherhood. Exactly. Does this apply to everybody? Except for you. All right. Uh, never in pub- exception to every rule. There. <laughs> yeah. Never publicly criticize uh, an employee of the town. Uh, concerns about staff performance that affect 
The committee in the performance of its mission must be discussed in executive session and voted to be brought uh, to the town administrator. Uh, in formal written communication or similarly to the superintendent of school for the school department staff. <clears throat> That's so fair. It does. Um, I do think maybe there should be a catch-all in case um, there's a concern regarding the town administrator or the superintendent of the schools that there be um, an elected body or leaders that they can go to should that person not be comfortable well, it's connecting kind of, with not already in place of them. Yeah, if it was an issue with the town administrator, they'd come to us, and if it was an issue with the superintendent, they'd go to the school committee. Well, I, I would know that, but if I'm relatively new on a board and I wanted to file a complaint or start a discussion, um, that's fine. I'm not going to argue too much about it. I just thought that it'd be put in writing that we, um, at the end of the day, be available to people that may have a complaint. No, that's, I mean, if you're sitting on a board or committee, I think that you'd probably want to start the process by bringing it to the chairman of that board. And then that issue would then go to the chairman of the appointing, you know, or the whole board of the appointing authority. Okay. And then kind of go from there, like kind of chain of command thing. Maybe we can write something like that out. Yeah, I mean, originally the way this was written, it included a, uh, an escape hatch that I didn't think was necessary. The superintendent and the town administrator are both evaluated publicly as a matter of law. Ah. So there really isn't, you're not going to be cutting off access for that evaluation process for your two chief administrators. This is about the boards and committees and how they conduct their activities. Because we still have the policies and procedures besides. That kind of makes sense. Um. All right. Rich? Yeah. Um, I, I know what uh, is being sought here. And I think I might come at it a little bit differently which is something like this, where there, where there is a concern about the conduct or performance of a public employee, uh, uh, an, an official shall refrain from public criticism and instead shall refer the complaint to the town administrator or school superintendent for appropriate personnel action. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, I th that what we're tr the there's a square we're trying to circle, or a circle we're trying to square. Which is what if it's the superintendent or it, you may have a member a board with seven members on it, yeah, and six people are perfectly happy with the staff support that supports their operation, but you got one person who just has a bee in their bonnet and grabs a microphone every time they have a chance and hammers the town engineer, just hammers the guy every time he comes to a meeting, or doesn't come to a meeting. It starts to look like. When, when a board has an opinion, it should express that opinion as a body. So if you go into executive session, there's that conversation. and You, you have to invite the person, by the way. It's an open meetings requirement that if you have an executive session, you have to invite the person that you're talking about to have a conversation with you, which they can decline, by the way. But you're giving a... You're making it so that one member isn't running away with the prestige of the board and casting the relationship with staff in a negative light because that's what they want to do for whatever reason. While the rest of the board, it's a lot harder to drag compliments out of people than it is to drag complaints. So the rest of the board may be perfectly happy with the site plan review notes or whatever the town engineer takes, right? That's what I'm trying to protect against is this, this notion that meetings turn into an ambush for anybody who's trying to take 
make recommendations on policy matters with a small minority of the board. We can come back and revisit that. I mean, it's not terrible as it's written. No. I, it, and now that you understand the, I think we get the intent. A lot of the language, yeah, my language wasn't changed. This, you had, this is a lot of the language is from your current policy. It, so, yeah, it may have um, the, the the lens in which I was looking at this may for that particular one in my notes may have been thinking more of personnel um, than necessarily a board member. So I'm. Yeah, I totally get it. The, the board itself would act as the body and the individual opinion would be heard, but ultimately it's, um, I think it's probably fine as is. Okay. Moving on. The other ones are struck. Yeah, the parts that are struck, I'm kind yeah. of amending out just yeah. what's still there. Uh, number nine is comply with the town of Douglas social mm -hmm. media policy as amended from time to time. I must admit, I don't. Where is that? No, not you. <laughs> Town website. Uh, is the social media policy on our website? It would be in your key policy section of the select board's web page. And it's in, I believe, it's in the personnel policies and procedures document. Maybe it would it does need to be updated. You to find it, that's all. Yeah, it's yeah. in the policy manual. It's on our Facebook page. No, yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, the the devil will be in the detail of the actual social media policy, but that's a different discussion. Right. All right, are we good on the social media side of it? Are you good on that? I am perfectly content with it. <laughs> You're a social media expert. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> you uh, warm over there? <laughs> <laughs> My seat just got hot. Uh, if serving as the chair of a committee, maintain decorum at all times during public meetings, enforcement of this code of conduct and procedural rules of order to allow for the effectiveness and efficient work of the committee. Committees shall not meet for more than two hours or past the hour of 10 o'clock p.m., whichever comes first, without a motion and a vote on the record to extend the meeting beyond those limits. So if I can advocate for something. This is like the one good thing I learned in Tiverton, Rhode Island, is you are violating open meetings in spirit, maybe not in letter, but in spirit, if you drag something on for so long that nobody's listening anymore. And it's the wee hours of the night. People aren't thinking clearly. The board's not being effective. People are talking over each other, and the wheels fall off. And it happens everywhere. It's a human part of the human condition. Once a meeting gets to be, and we're getting there now, close to two hours long, you're starting to run on a bandwidth. You can go right ahead. The way this is written, go right ahead and have a long meeting. Just take a vote mm -hmm. that says you're consciously recognizing that. We you need that, to continue. We do that, actually do it and done that at town meeting. Well, yeah. it's in your town meeting bylaw, I yeah. believe, that you can't go past a certain time. Yeah. Um, just putting the same rule to the boards and commissions. I personally, I just hold in very low esteem meetings that go on for three, four hours. Something isn't right about the way that meeting is being conducted, and especially if you're at the end of the agenda, and you've got. You know, it's land use, so your rights as a landowner are going to be decided by this board. And now you decide, you know, it's you know quarter of eleven. They want to get to the Red Sox game, and, and then you got to work the next day. We got to remember that people have lives, especially the volunteers on our boards and commissions. Maybe a group of people on a board that want to keep going, but everybody else is like, I put the kids in, on the bus at six thirty. Let's go. And you just have to have a conscious stop. What are we doing here? It's very rare. I have, I've heard it, you hear it all the time at town meeting. I don't think I've ever heard it, maybe at one select board meeting, where somebody actually raised their head and said, I moved the previous question. It's just not something that's common in Douglas to cut off debate and proceed to a vote immediately. I've heard it a couple of times, yeah. Can we okay. move to 11? Yes, we may. 
candidate seeking appointment shall review and sign written copy of this code of conduct prior to being considered for appointment as part of the application process and shall be bound to this code of conduct for the duration of their term if appointed. I like that. Seems to make sense if we're doing this. Yeah, the only thing I, would, I would like to do is uh, include the current members. Yes. It's not said that in there. This is prior to appointment, okay. seeking appointment. So I don't know if you can do it retroactively. So. It's a little hard. Yeah. The, the notion is that there may be some people who don't want to work in this environment. You know, they want to come and just run at the mouth, and they want to sign. When their when their term comes up, they can make that decision whether they want to be reappointed or not and sign this. But the code wasn't in place when they were appointed. So to hold them to a code that is different than the one that was in place when they were appointed after the really fact, fair. it's not really fair. Well, yes, it is done. We're moving forward to today, from today on. So well, how does uh, Rich feel about that? Rich, they're calling on you. It's a Socratic method. Hmm. Give me the question again. <laughs> That's the oldest law school trick ever. Can you repeat the question? Somebody back of me is going to hand me a note with the answer. The question is, is the way that this code of conduct is written is for new people um, looking to be appointed and, and take office on any one of these boards or committees. Or reappointed. Or reappointed. Well, actually, that part was kind of Matt explained. Yeah. So for the existing members that are currently sitting on these boards, um, Mike wants to know how we can implement that out to the existing members as a code of conduct change, or do we have to wait until they're up for reappointment to expect them to be held to these rules? I think you have to wait till it's up for reappointment for the existing people. You have to add that language to this. this reappointment is not in this language. Right. I put reappointment in there. And that is, uh, that is all of them, which we have... Matt's been taking copious notes on edit with the... That's for you, Rich. Low fuel <laughs> indicator. Get some gas, Rich. <laughs> well. All right, so we've can reviewed... We, can, we, can we let Rich go? Uh, we need oh, him for the next guys. one, too. Oh, okay. Are you going to stay with us, Rich, or are you going to... you want us to call you back for executive session? Uh... Yeah, why don't you keep, call me back? We needed okay. him for the next one. No, really. Wait, the next one? What's the next Discuss one? remote meetings with chairs and legal counsel. Oh, all right. Yeah. Rich, you can't go anywhere. Well, all right. <laughs> Kevin insisted. Just so you put a record. <laughs> I insisted because it says discuss yeah. remote meeting with chairs and legal counsel. Yeah. I let, you're still legal right. counsel, right, Rich? Uh, uh, last time I checked, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> All right, so we're back to the never-ending discussion on remote meetings and uh, remote participation in meetings uh, for boards and committees. And we kind of keep running into a, the, the state has put out their own form of guidance on some of this, like case in point, the school committee is continuing to meet remotely. Um, they would got an opinion from the Attorney General's office that said that we do not have the authority to tell them that they cannot use no, no kidding, really? remote participation. Then what's the point to talk about? Well, I think the situation we're dealing with on that one is uh, ordinarily under the pre-COVID uh, regulations. We have a lot more power to dictate to other boards uh, and, in fact, which boards can meet uh, remotely. Uh, so prior to the governor's first declaration, we could have said, well, selectmen can do it, but, you know, pick another board. They can't. But when the governor adopted the COVID order uh, and then renewed it, in uh, June, uh, he specified that all boards could participate in the remote system. 
Now, once that order expires, uh, we, we go back to the old system uh, where only those boards that you approve can participate. But as long as the governor's order remains in effect, uh, everybody can do it. Yeah, if you want, I can read off you what she had sent. It says, after further consideration and review of both the Attorney General's open meeting law regulations and the new legislation regarding remote meetings, we believe that a public body such as a select board does not have the authority at this time to prohibit the use of remote participation by other public bodies. Because, of, because public bodies are not required to adopt remote participation before utilizing it, sections 940 CMR 29-10-3 and 29-10-8, which allows entities to restrict the use of remote participation, are not applicable at this time. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was saying. The, the key words in that uh, discussion are at this time. And what that phrase at this time means is during the duration of the governor's COVID order. So with that being said, I guess in my mind it makes sense we just table this until the COVID order comes to an end. Yeah, one, and one yeah. thing that Rich said was um, the boards of committees that we decide. Matt had told us before um, it's all or nothing for us whenever we did. It was either all or nothing. And so is it Actually, all I was or nothing, forwarding Rich, Rich Bowen's or, opinion. Yeah, is it all or nothing, Rich, or can we allow, because we have certain boards like the uh, Library Trustee, the Oktoberfest Committee, um, different committees like that that don't have any that, public yeah. input and they would prefer to meet remotely if they could. Can you split it up and have some meet and some not meet? You know, I've been giving some thought to that particular issue, and uh, some of the most recent uh, writing on that from the Attorney General seems to suggest that we can designate which boards can meet remotely and which can't, I mean, setting aside the COVID order. So... Um, can we leave it up to the discretion of the chairs? Uh... Well, you could adopt a policy uh, that conferred that kind of discretion, sure. Okay. I think we should consider waiting, doing anything until COVID's and let, let the boards do that. Then we'll have more experience as to whether or not we want to continue it once the... But allow them to do remote and... Yeah. 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 So right now we could do it as the discretion of the chair and then... Yeah see how it works if it's working. Yeah, and that will have more evidence to see if we want to continue it once that's over. What are your thoughts, Matt? I'm so beaten down over this issue, and so <laughs> many people who are providing guidance have reversed yeah. prior guidance that I just don't want to fight it anymore. It's the modern world yeah, is people have you. video conference, yeah. Yeah. and my why fight change? Yeah, my argument is still the same as the difficulty that we run into with uh, with the zoning board for one, uh, just being able to have clear information and making good good judgment, it's still the same. However, it's if it's all I think you're gonna. I think you're really concerning yourselves with something that's a going to be a short-term issue because once the governor's order expires, and uh, gosh, the expiration date is. I I don't remember. It's uh, something like January. Uh, of 2022, but in any event, it's it's not far away. Uh, once that order expires, we're back to the the old setup. So, um, you know, I I would prefer that you know we reflect on the lessons that we've learned, and then when the COVID the emergency order is gone, we come back at it and fine-tune what we've got makes sense. I mean in the interim considering that's out there yeah you know I mean just let the other boards and committees know that according to the governor's order they are still allowed to do remote participation and that there'll be a formal policy coming from the Board of Selectmen at a later date yeah, yeah. to the to the, uh, to the discretion of the chair or just yeah. 
Yeah. yeah just up to because the chair. The chair is responsible for keeping the uh, the meeting process in check. So I would think that it would go through them. Does that work for any of the chairmen that are here? Does that work for you, Shirley? Yeah. Okay. Do we need a motion on that? Uh, excuse me. I, I think we need to look even further, maybe later on, because sometimes when meetings are held and people are not up to par, the weather is bad, but they really like to participate in this changing world, might want to consider something uh, I work for a technology company. I've been an advocate for remote meetings for a while. It's just, it, it depends really on the board that's meeting. Like Mike's brought up some great points. If yeah. if you have members on a board that don't have the technology to actually like do screen share or document sharing and things like that, remote participation can actually be a hindrance. Yeah. So. so this will be a fact gathering period. Yeah, and in the interim then Anybody want to make the pressure motion? off the whole yeah. situation until January? Yeah. Anyway. Well, until January. It, and I also think it recognizes some of the feedback that we've received so far, which is that, frankly, some of the, the volunteers, you yeah, prefer it. So, yeah. I'm, I'm good. You good? Anybody want to make a motion on it? Um, I'll make a motion that we abstain from any uh, blanket policy adopted by the Board of Selectmen restricting the use of remote participation. Meeting. Remote participation. Remote, remote participation. You want to put that at the discretion of the chairs? I thought I said that. At the discretion of the chair. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing as none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And Lisa, we'll have it on the agenda again so we can reverse our decision and then <laughs> reverse it again. <laughs> can we do that remotely? We can. We're going to dial, all of us are going to call in remotely and reverse this. <laughs> Simultaneously. <laughs> Roll call vote. <laughs> all right, Rich, we're going to let you go so we move on to our rest of our agenda. Thanks, Rich. Okay. So I'll uh, wait for your call. Yes, sir. All right. Let's Thanks. See. Thanks, guys. I will make a motion that we approve the August 24th, 2021 minutes. Second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing as none, all those in favor say aye. 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 I will also make a motion to approve the executive session minutes for August 24th, 2021 and retain those minutes. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing as none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Your report, Mr. Administrator. I'm going to blast through it quickly. Uh, earlier we had a conversation about 911, and it is the 20th anniversary this year. On the municipal level, we respect those who died that day by implementing the lessons we learned from that crisis and from Hurricane Katrina and locally from the station nightclub fire in Rhode Island with respect to emergency response and the premium value on communication and organization. Um, we all have sympathy for those who lost people that they loved or that they knew and we should remember that. We should also remember that that's the reason why we I will get my soapbox for five seconds. You can shoot me if you want to, but um, America can't shrink from its role in the world. And we send people in harm's way to protect a form of civilization that provides for due process and equal rights and a lot of things that we believe in. And there are people who don't like that. And they tried to hurt us that day. They tried to undermine the core of our existence. And we should take that lesson and 
just come back stronger every time somebody tries to hurt us as a country. Uh, superpowers need to be resilient. And part of what we learned was when, when we got people running around at a horrible scene, um, we have to make sure they have the tools they need to do their job, which is what we try to strive at the municipal government. Secondly, COVID, we're at, a, at or about, because it changes every day, about 18 active cases in town that are reported, which is, that's actually back at our surge levels. <coughs> Again, family groups, a couple of large families, a couple of large social groups that have been very busy with COVID over the past couple of weeks. We haven't had any deaths, but it is still a real thing for, especially for those who expose themselves to risk factors. Um, right now, we're not anticipating any policy change with how we're responding to it. Uh, we're still doing screeners, screening questions when calls come in to dispatch for medical assistance. We are investing CARES Act funds because they are still valid through December 31st for personal protective equipment. Uh, which we've distributed to the library and the senior center, and I'm waiting to hear from the schools. I know that they need some, 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 some uh, blah, blah, supplies over there that I have in inventory that have already been purchased uh, with CARES Act funds. What's the definition of an active case, both that the feds are reporting us? Is it somebody that, if somebody tested positive but no symptoms, is that considered an active case? I think that's the way we're dealing with it. So it's a confirmed approved test format, which is no longer just the PCR test. I think you can do a rapid test with Binax, and, but that's a confirmed case that goes into the database. Yeah. Regardless of whether symptoms, regardless of whether or not Correct. hospitalized, et cetera, okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to touch on a success and then talk about what next steps will be. The town applied for an assistance of firefighters grant which is a federal program uh, for a brush truck. A brush truck that was in fact on the capital plan for the fire department. May not have been the highest priority, but it was on the plan. And no kidding, the existing truck is 49 years old. Hmm. So it doesn't hurt to have it on the capital plan. We don't take things out of order because we want to. The way grants work is you apply to the grant making authority for what they make available for the purpose that they designate. And if it appears in your plan at some point, it is actually, in my opinion, dereliction of duty not to apply for that grant. Yeah. So you may accelerate this or that purchase into a, new, a closer time frame because frankly, somebody's giving you money and that's why you do it. Um, it's a shame that not everybody understands that, but that's the way it is. The cap on a brush truck is a quarter of a million dollars. They won't award you more than that. And then of course there's a 95-5 there's a split on, on the funding of it. So the actual grant is, I'm not gonna round out to the hundreds of dollars. It's 238, bless you. Thank you. $238,000. And we're in the process now of pricing out the exact spec that the fire department wants on the brush truck. Brush trucks are very, um, they're plug and play. You can put a lot of different things on a brush truck and it's up to the chief, assistant chief in the department to spec the product that they want to buy. When we get to a certain point, we may have to add things as add alternates and see where we get in the bidding process. It's a chicken or egg, right? It's, a, it's unlawful for the procurement officer to go out for a procurement if the funds are not all secured for the purchase. So even though we have the majority of it, the grant, until we know that town meeting approves anything additional, I really can't go out. So we're gonna to have to figure out how a, a graceful estimate quote process from a couple of vendors to get a ballpark figure and then ask town meeting for the appropriate amount of money. Uh, and we're gonna to have to do that on the November warrant. So that's the plan. Um, there's a placeholder for that? There's a placeholder for that. We do have a candidate for Director of Community Development that we'll be interviewing tomorrow. And I'm hopeful uh, the candidate meets all the minimum requirements, but we're not gonna precast the result of the interview. Um, we're following the same interview process that we did last time. The chairs 
and in some cases vice chairs of relevant committees that will work with the department head as well as the staff that work in that office participate in the interview process. And I'm not looking for unanimity, but we are looking for as strong a consensus as we can get. Be <coughs> mindful of the select board's specific instructions to the town administrator were not to recruit specifically only engineers. In this case, the candidate is, does not have a degree in engineering, but has a wealth of experience in planning and a lot of the technical aspects of running a planning department and has experience running a planning department. So um, we won't let the perfect get in the end of the way the of the bad, uh, the, the, the enemy of the good. Um, just a quick conversation about uh, town meeting and where we're headed. Uh, my goal is to have a fairly comprehensive update for FinCom on the 14th of September. But as we approach the fall, the financial condition of the town appears to be very robust, and that's good news for everyone. Our turn back from the departments is strong. Uh, we were very conservative in our projections in the budget for revenues, and we have exceeded those revenue projections. Some of that is one time, so we sold a piece of property on Webster Street. No kidding, that's not going to be replicated year after year. It's a one-time event. We are on a trend with the building industry uh, is very strong. So we have a lot of permit fees that have come in that were well over anticipated levels. And then lastly, new growth is very strong. So new growth was certified at $345,000, which is a very significant impact to the budget not only this year, but going forward, because that's added to your levy projection for next year. So um, you have more flexibility in looking towards your future than you've had in, in quite a long time. It's a good thing, but it's also, it becomes more intense conversations about how to, the resources are still scarce and you still have needs. So you're not out of the woods, you know, uh, Douglas is not Newton, but you are, are in a much better position and you have some flexibility to do some things and we'll have to have a conversation and build consensus from the finance director and myself and the select board and the FinCom and town meeting on what you want to prioritize. What I hear people talk about a lot is roads and I think we need a long-term solution for funding a roadway improvement and maintenance program that demonstrates real value to the taxpayer uh, who's supplying a lot of these funds. So we're going to try to come up with some creative solutions um, for adoption at spring town meeting, not the fall. That's all I have for a report right now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Any open session topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of this meeting? I have, I have one. Just a, a shout out to the highway department, which uh, completely rehabilitated a collapsed culvert right in front of my house on Orange Street. And I, just amazed at how efficiently they did that and I would have thought maybe they needed a private contractor but they had all the skills in-house to do that. It's a, did a great job and we get, definitely get our, our money's value from the highway department, public works. So here, here. it's our first-hand experience what they did. And did they provide a boat for you to go do a little it was, fishing? It wasn't or? flood, no. Uh -huh. no. <laughs> So you're specializing in good mutters, are you now? Good, yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. They do a, yeah. a, a great job. I saw them actually pull down to down your street um, shortly thereafter uh, with tools and dirt and things in tow. Yeah. Yep. And I'm sure you weren't the only one. All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, given the uh, 9 o'clock hour, I would make a motion that we move into executive session for the purposes of litigation and investigation than to leave executive session for the purpose of adjournment. Boy, was that smooth. That was a really good one. Was. Yeah, it's worth hearing again. You get, like oh. <laughs> you get one a week. <laughs> you see? Goosebumps. One a week. Second. The motion has been eloquently made and yeah. seconded. 
Can I? It was a nice bed, uh, much better than a rendition that Kevin came up with when you were in here. Oh, yeah? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's late years ahead of mine. It's, 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 <laughs> we're in an age of specialization. You're making me <laughs> blush. Can I have a roll call vote, please? It's Patrick I. Bone and I. Moise I. Davis I. 